Hello traders, welcome to the video tutorial today. We're going to be looking at the trade panel again and we're going to be looking at the OCO functionality that's built into the panel here. So OCO, I think officially stands for order cancels order and that means if you place two pending orders into the market, basically tackling the same trade setup but with two different orders and what you're hoping for is one of those orders to get triggered and then automatically the other order that you placed gets cancelled so in the scenario that I can think of to describe this best is when you have a reversal candlestick pattern and you are not sure whether you are going to go for the retracement entry or a breakout entry then you can actually use an OCO type of order setup whereas you set the retracement entry and you set a breakout entry and whichever one of those gets triggered first, it will cancel the other one. So you don't have any other pending orders lingering around or anything like that. I have created two types of OCO-esque functionality. One is for the scenario I just described, a ret retracement entry and a breakout entry combo. And the other is called OCG, which is not really an industry term. It's something I made up. It's an extension of OCO and quite simply OCG means order cancels a group of orders so instead of having OCO where we we only have a pair of orders and you know one will, will cancel the other one we can actually have a group of orders as many as you like and if soon as one of those trade orders in that group becomes active changes from pending to active i.e. it gets triggered then we can actually just cancel the rest so in that case we would use that type of uh, approach with say um, sometimes I get hey Dale I, I see a, a trade set up on the pound US dollar the pound yen and the pound Aussie which one will I take well you can actually set an order on every single one of them and assign them to the same OCG group as soon as one of those trades get triggered the rest will get cancelled, the panel takes care of that for you. So that's the difference between OCO and OCG and I'm going to walk you through those now with the panel. So what I'll do first is I'll explain the OCO functionality which is just simplified down to the scenario where you would want to get in with a retracement entry or a breakout entry. So let's say that we're looking at candle 1 here okay? because remember candle 0 is the current candle then candle 1 is the previous candle and we count backwards uh, let me zoom in here so we got candle one here now I'm not saying that I would take this trade set up normally I'm just using it as an example but we can see that the price is within the candle ones range so we've got the option still to grab a retracement entry wherever you want that retracement point to be and a breakout entry so what we would do is we would go to the get me in the damn trade option here under entry strategy options okay and that just means all right I'll get in via the retracement or the breakout so it gives you the option to select a candle all right so we target candle one and then it gives you the retracement entry option so where do you want the retracement to be we can change this for example we can make this 60% we can make it less we can make it whatever we want once we've done that it's very simple we just set our other parameters here we'll make the risk reward uh, we'll pump that up a bit to 5 so we don't have orders messing up the chart and we can basically apply anything else that uh, we want to the trade we can put trailing stops in, whatever we want the panel is capable of handling whatever you set here with the OCO functionality the stop loss we can use whatever we want there too but we're going to set the stop loss at the candle high low so well, if I press sell it will set a an order at the 60% mark and it will set a breakout order below the low there so we're waiting for a breakout of the low and it's going to wait for one of those orders to get triggered and then uh, obviously the stop loss will go above the high because that's what we set it at however if we press buy then it's going to set a 60% order you know, from the high so it will set us about a 60% order there 60% retracement that would be a buy stop in this case they'd both be buy stops because price is under both those entry prices and then we'd wait for a breakout above the high so either one so in, in this case it 
kind of does it doesn't make sense to use a buy order because if the market is going to move up, it's going to hit the retracement price first, right? And then the hot, the breakout order will get cancelled. Uh, obviously, the stop loss will go below the low. But it does make sense to use a, a sell OCO order if you want to, in this case, because we've got price trapped in between a retracement entry potential and a breakout entry potential. So either one of those could get hit. So we'll set one of those up. Everything looks good here. And we just hit sell. Okay, and it's opening, tells you what it's doing. And now we've got two different trade orders. There's our 60% retracement entry, and here's our breakout entry. Both those trades have the same stop loss, which is above the candle high, because that's what we set. And here is the retracement orders five times multiplier by risk, so five times risk reward. And here's the breakout order five times ROI. If you want to change those targets after the orders have been placed, that's quite all right. The panel is not going to be upset about that. It's just actually going to be tracking the ticket numbers now. And if we go to the trade monitor here, we can see the panel is actually tracking two tickets and it will actually tell you we're waiting for OCO to be triggered. There's the ticket numbers down there and they should correlate with what you see in here. So it's basically just a nice list that, so you can see, okay, the panel's waiting for OCO trigger once it detects one of these trades goes live, then it's going to cancel the other one. And in this scenario, it should then remove control of itself from those trades. It will forget about them because they will not need any more assistance because we don't have any trailing stops or anything like that. This is just a simple set, forget, collect kind of OCO. But if we did have a trailing stop, then the active trade would remain in the monitor here and it would actually tell you in the status, I'm trailing this stop loss then it would take control in that respect but nothing's going to happen uh, whether you have a trailing stop or not until that OCO triggered scenario gets hit I might leave the video here and it uh, looks like this could potentially just drop down in a minute and trigger that breakout order in which case the retracement order would get cancelled so I'll pause the video and then we'll come back and have a look at what happened all right we're back and the OCO event has triggered and the breakout order has fired off and become active and you can see that it's the only one that's remaining now in the trade orders here. The limit order, which was the retracement order, has got cancelled. So this is basically you know, what OCO does. We've just got two orders. We're waiting for one to get triggered and then the other one gets discarded. It's just a multi-entry approach to a certain trade idea. So that's basically OCO in a nutshell. One order cancels another or order cancels other. Incorporated in the get me in the damn trade entry strategy here on the trade panel. That's basically where you're going to find the classic OCO. Now if you want more advanced control here with what I was telling you about the OCG functionality that I created. We're going to be looking at this part of the panel here. And it's very simple. All you really need to do is place your trades, set anything up that you like on the panel, and then you just simply say, I want to assign this trade to a group. All right, and then you can just give it a group number. And what happens is every time you place a pending order, you assign it to the same group and you can add as many as you like. As soon as one of those orders in that group gets triggered, then the rest of the pending orders in that group will get cancelled and discarded. So that is the OCG type of functionality. So we'll do an example of that. Okay, I'm all set up, ready to show you the OCG functionality of the panel. So OCG obviously will be used when you've got the intention of setting up multiple pending orders. They can be on the same chart or across different charts. Uh, and you only want one of those pending orders to actually go live. And when one of them does go live, then you want the rest of them to be cancelled. It's that one order cancels a group of pending orders. And usually this will happen when you see multiple signals across multiple charts and you only want to take one of them. So you would use an OCG order functionality, assign them all to a group, panel will take care of the rest. Even if, when you enter multiple currencies, as you'll see here, the master panel takes control of all the trades and basically monitors them from this single location. So it can detect if any of those trades do become live and handle them all from a single location. You only need the master chart open. 
So let's go ahead. So I've just set up a simple breakout entry configuration here. Just remember, uh, the way you actually assign a trade to an OCG group, you can set the panel up any way you like. You just have to make sure you click that checkbox there. That's the OCG directive right there. You're telling the panel, okay, assign this to an OCG group of number one. So as long as that number is zero or above, uh, you can assign it to that group. So we'll just go ahead and short. Let's set up a breakout order for us. We go to the trade monitor. We can actually get a bit more information here. This is only obviously available on the master panel, but we can see the ticket number here correlates with what we can see down there. Obviously that's a bit off the chart, but uh, the ticket numbers match. It tells us the pair that ticket number is associated with. It's the status. It actually says it's waiting for an OCG trigger. You will know that that ticket number is part of an OCG group and it tells you here also the OCG group number. All right, so that's just a little bit of information for you. Maybe a bit of peace of mind or just a bit of reassurance that the panel's doing what uh, it's supposed to. And obviously the remove button is there. If you want to remove that trade from the OCG group, if you click remove, it's, it's just like a global kill button. It won't delete the trade, but it will tell the panel, please don't worry about this trade anymore or this ticket number anymore. I don't want you to touch it, okay? All right, so let's move along. Let's go to the next chart here and we'll set up another short order on the Aussie Swiss franc. So we're on a different pair at the moment. Don't forget to assign it to the group and obviously you have to assign it to the same group that you want to pull your trade orders into. Uh, well, I've actually, actually accidentally set that as enter at market, which would basically trigger the OCG kill command. Uh, so we've got to make sure that's on breakout entry. So if you're piling in these pending orders into your OCG group. If you accidentally add a live market order into that group, inside the panel, it's going to detect, hey, we've got a live trade open inside this OCG group. Kill all the pending orders inside that group. So you don't want to do that. So just double check your settings here before you enter a trade. So we'll go ahead and short that, and that's going to add it to group number one. Now, if we actually go back to the panel here and click on the trade monitor, we can see what I was saying before, how the panel with master control basically takes control of the trade here. And we can see the new trade added in. That's the Aussie Swiss franc ticket numbers there. Also waiting for that OCG trigger and also in that group number one there. So you get a bit of a sort of bird's eye view of what's going on. And then we'll do the same here. We'll do a breakout entry, which just means we want the entry price to be above be higher the previous candle because our target candle is one adding that to group number one as well i'm hoping this will come down and trigger the pending order so we'll add that in hopefully if the market just pops down a little bit that'll trigger our pending order here and uh, make the ticket go live or make the trade go live so we'll go back to the master panel you can see that the trade was added in and ocg group number one so another cool thing is you can have multiple groups running in parallel. So let's just say I want to add another group and we'll do this one. I will just do another short here, but let's add it to group number. I will, we can do any number. We'll do group number lucky seven and we'll just short that again. And we'll go here, put that one, put that one in number seven. And we'll also we'll short this one this time. We'll go back to the master panel and we'll see what's going on. So now we can see we've got two OCG groups. We've got group number one and group number seven, and they're going to be viewed independently of one another. They won't cross contaminate. So any of these tickets that go live in group number one, they'll cancel the rest in group one. Any tickets that go live in group seven, it'll cancel the rest of the pending orders in group seven. Now there is a scenario, it's rare, but it can happen where two trades may be triggered at the same moment or on the same tick in the same group. So you'll have a scenario where you get two active trades in the OCG group, which is illegal. We don't want that. So what the panel does is it does have that redundancy system where it can handle you know multiple triggers, and this is how it does it. So what it does is it looks at the open trades left, and it will arrange them by profitability. And it will actually keep the one that's in most profit and cancel the rest so you only have the trade left over that was doing obviously the best in the scenario that this may happen you're probably only gonna be looking at 
you know, very minimal loss. Uh, it's probably just going to pay for the spread on those accidentally triggered trades. So it's even possible for two or three trades or four to get triggered. Uh, the panel will handle that immediately. It will just get straight on top of that. It will cancel all the pending orders in the group and then it will start cutting off all the live trades that shouldn't be open and leave the one there that was uh, in the most profit. All right, so let's kill these panels. We don't need them anymore because they're not the master panel. So we, you only need the master panel open here. And we'll actually go ahead and close the master panel. All right, and this will be a certain scenario where, I don't know, your power might go out you uh, your computer crashes or you accidentally close MT4 for some reason and you've got all these trades here now that belong to an OCG group but there's nothing here to control them well the panel actually will remember what it was doing if we load it again okay it's off the other screen but it actually says it's restored five trade groups okay if we go to the trade monitor there they are again and the panel is going to remember this is basically the panel picking up from its restore point and it's getting back to work. So that's just a backup feature that's basically automated inside the panel. So yeah, you just, just need to keep the master panel open. It's the one that's doing the work. It's the one that's babysitting your trades. And if you close that and there's no more master panels open, then you're in a bit of trouble, especially if you've got uh, these OCG type of orders in. Because the last thing you want is you know a couple of these trades triggering and going live and doing something when you're only meant to have one open, right? Okay, so what I'll do is I'll leave the panel here and I'll come back and I'll show you what happened. All right, guys, I'm back and one of those trades has triggered and it was actually that New Zealand dollar yen trade. It must have pulled back. Indeed it did. And it's uh, triggered the OCG group number one. So if we go to the trade monitor now, we should not see any more pending orders in group one and there we are they're all cleared out so no more group ones the panel has done its job one of the trades was triggered in group one therefore the rest get cut off and we can see that group number seven still is waiting to be triggered so here are those two pending orders here and you can see that's just a clear example of the OCG groups working independently of one another they don't interfere they don't cross contaminate one another so to speak so this is great functionality if you're trying to enter multiple signals but you know you only want one to be left there at the end of the day you only want one trigger and then the rest out so this is just basically a really cool trade management feature I haven't seen OCG type of functionality used anywhere else. This is something I basically come up with as a extension to the normal OCO functionality. And the thing is you can actually combine OCO. So remember OCO is get me in the damn trade. You can actually set up a bunch of OCO orders that are in within an OCG group. Okay, if, if that doesn't make your head spin. So that's it from me. I hope you find the OCO and OCG functionality very helpful and very cool and hopefully useful. And I'll see you in the next tutorial for the panel.